one of the integral rules is that the indefinite integral of 1 over x dx is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus a constant. So in other words, the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus a constant. But why is it natural log of the absolute value of x? Do you really have to put this absolute value? Where does this come from? Well, okay, if you don't put the absolute value, let's say you don't put the absolute value. What's the issue with that? The issue is that, so if you just write it this way, well, then here you can't input any x that's less than zero, right? Because the domain of just the natural log of x is anything, any x that's greater than zero. But the function that you integrated, 1 over x, does allow you to put x values that are less than zero. You can't put x is equal to zero, but you can absolutely put negative x values in, into 1 over x. And so when you take its integral, you would think that you might be interested in putting negative x values into the integral. And in this case, you can't. But in this case, you can. The domain of the natural log of the absolute value of x is the exact same domain as 1 over x. You can put any real number except x is equal to zero. Okay, but where does this come from? Well, we know that the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of x is 1 over x. And we also know that the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the absolute value of x is equal to 1 over x as well. Okay, but still, why is this integral, this antiderivative, equal to just the natural log of the absolute value of x? Okay, well, there's a couple of ways you need to look at this to eliminate any confusion. The first idea is, so remember, the natural log of the absolute value of x includes the, the curve for the natural log of x. So here's a plot of the natural log of x. This is the natural log of x, okay? So we know you can't input any x that's less than or equal to zero. The domain is just x is greater than zero. Okay, now here's the plot for the natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay, now what you can see is that when x is greater than zero, the natural log of the absolute value of x is the exact same curve as just the natural log of x. And that makes sense because if you restrict x to be greater than zero, you can just remove the absolute value, right? Okay, and so that's the reason why if you start with this indefinite integral here, so you're given this indefinite integral, which is saying, what is the antiderivative of one over x? What function, when you take its derivative, gives one over x? You could say natural log of x, and that's not wrong, but it's, this is not the most general. If you say natural log of the absolute value of x, then you're including the natural log of just x if x is greater than zero. But you're also including this entire curve if x is negative. And you want to include this curve. Why is that? Because the derivative of this curve is also 1 over x. The derivative of this curve is 1 over x. And the derivative of this curve is 1 over x. So if you're going to give the antiderivative of 1 over x, you want to include this entire curve and this entire curve. And that's exactly what the natural log of the absolute value of x does. So all you have to say is natural log of absolute value of x plus c. And this is the most general answer to what function, when you take its derivative, gives 1 over x. Now, you still might be a little confused in the sense that how do these two curves have the exact same derivative, right? They look similar, but it's not like this curve is like just a shifted version of, of the curve on the right. So what's going on here is that if x is greater than 0, and you evaluate the derivative of this curve, the slope at any point is gonna be one over x. So at when x is equal to two, the slope of the curve at this point is one half. When x is equal to four, the slope of the curve at this point is one fourth. Okay, if x is less than zero, the slope of the curve at any point is also one over x, right? So when x is equal to minus two, what's the slope of the curve at, at this point? Well, it's one over minus two. So minus one half, and that makes sense. This slope is negative. When x is equal to minus four, the slope is minus one fourth, one over x, one over minus four. So for these two curves, the slopes aren't the same, 
even though the formulas seem to indicate that they are, what's going on is that the slopes are the same magnitude, but for x is greater than zero, the slopes are positive, and when x is less than zero, the slopes are negative. But again, in either case, the derivative of both of these functions is one over x. Okay, before I end this video, I want to point out one other topic that's related to, to this integral. So here is the, the power rule for integration. So you want to find the, the indefinite integral, the antiderivative of x to the n power. And so you're going in the reverse of the power rule for differentiation. And all you do is to evaluate this integral, it's x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, and then plus a constant. And this makes sense. So if you have, if you want to find this integral, then you do x to the 2 plus 1 is 3 over 3. So this is 1 third x cubed. So to, when you take this derivative, you bring down the 3. 3 times 1 third is 1. And then x to the 3 minus 1 is 2. So you're left with x squared. Okay. Now, this rule here is... It works for any n value other than n is equal to minus 1. Okay, now, also want to point out the n is not an integer. It's any number, any real number. So even if, like, you had x to the pi, so pi is, you know, it's not even, it's, it's an irrational number, then this is equal to x to the pi plus 1 over pi plus 1 plus c. Okay, so it's, if this is any, this n is any number, any real number, positive or negative. Yeah, I mean, I, we could have done minus pi, and it would have been like that. Just n can't be equal to minus 1. Okay, so what's this n can't be equal to minus 1 associated with? Well, first of all, because if n is equal to minus 1, according to this formula, you'll be dividing by 0. You'll have x to the 0 power over 0. You can't do that. But also... So if we input n is equal to minus 1 here, wh what is that? So you've got x to the minus 1 dx. What is that? That's 1 over x. x to the minus 1 is 1 over x. And so what I'm trying to point out here is that, yes, n can't be equal to minus 1 for this, this, this power rule of integration formula because according to the formula, you're, you can't divide by 0. But even before you even think about this formula, if we just start here, n can't be minus 1 because this is a special case. We know that the derivative of 1 over x, or the integral of 1 over x dx, that's not a power rule integral. This is associated with the natural log of, of x, right? For all other cases, for, for x squared, x cubed, the integral is, you know, like 1 third x cubed. You know, you, it's going to be some coefficient with x to the something power to where when you take the, the, the derivative, you, you're bringing down the power and, and then subtracting one from the exponent and, and, and you get back the original function. That's what for n is not equal to minus one. That's what it's, 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 it's a reverse power rule. This is all about, it, it makes sense. This is all about going in the reverse of the power rule for differentiation. However, when n is equal to minus one, we're not dealing with the power rule anymore. So forgetting about this formula, when n is equal to minus 1, th that's not a power rule problem anymore, right? This, this is where we're dealing with the natural log. Okay, so that's where the indefinite integral of 1 over x comes from. And also you can see how this, this only restriction for the power rule of integration, where n can't be equal to minus 1, you can see how that restriction is, is associated with the indefinite integral of 1 over x.